welcome to our friend um, Rosalia from Consent Parenting. Hey, Hi. how are you? I'm oh. fine, and I'm so happy that uh, we're having the live today. I've been kind of expecting uh, this day for a, a few weeks. Yes, <laughs> I know. Me too. Me just. Oh, okay. 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 It's, it's cutting, so I don't know if it's like the internet, what's going on. Uh, okay, I, I, I just switched it to uh, data, so hopefully that makes a difference. Okay, wonderful. So I'm going to explain this to the, uh, everybody who's going to join us. We're going to do half an hour of the hour. It's going to be only in English. We're going to go over all, you know, what... Rosalia is offering uh, what, what she's doing at this moment, but we're also going to talk about like this important topic of uh, consent, especially for families. And then the other half an hour, we're going to go out and we're going to go in again because I would like to um, record separate uh, tracks of, you know, for different uh, communities. So one is going to be in English, the first half is going to be in only in English, and the second half is going to be in Spanish. Yes. Okay, so would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Rosalia Rivera, and I'm a consent educator. And what I do is I help parents, specifically survivor parents, but it's not exclusive to survivor parents, but I, I help parents learn how to educate their children on the topics of uh, body safety, boundaries, and consent so that they can prevent abuse and break intergenerational cycles. And I do that through uh, online programs and a membership that I'm going to be offering soon um, and through all of my social channels. So I really love to just educate people and to help empower them to really, uh, you know, educate their children and empower the next generation. So that's what I do. That's awesome. And I, I, as many of maybe you guys uh, will know more about Rosalia, she has not only consent parenting, but also a podcast. Would you like to share, you know, the other two lines that you do? Yeah, sure. So I do also uh, have a podcast. It's called About Consent. And the podcast is specifically for survivors and those who support survivors. So whether you you're, have a family member or a spouse, anyone in your life who is a survivor and you want to help support them, this podcast offers um, information, education, inspiration, um, and I also have guests that come onto the podcast to offer uh, tools and resources to help survivors navigate their experiences to become a thriver. So one of the, I consider myself a thriver. I'm also a survivor myself of both childhood sexual abuse and rape. And I've been able to overcome a lot of, uh, you know, those experiences. I come from a family of survivors. And so this is something that I'm very intimately, um, you know, experienced with. I have a different perspective. And so my goal is to provide support for survivors in all of those ways. Um, so that we can all become empowered and reclaim our voice, reclaim our sexuality, reclaim uh, the things that we felt were taken away, but that are really truly still deep inside of us that we can just tap into. Um, and then separately, I also have a line of clothing that I'm uh, starting to launch this year, which is called Consent Wear. And oh, it's nice. clothing, yeah, so it's clothing for kids, uh, teens and adults that are really aimed to help spread consent culture. So t-shirts uh, for kids, for example, um, say I'm a consent empowered kid. And this is for, um, you know, kids that are going through the consent education process. And it's just another layer for them to, to have another voice to say, look, I, I know my rights. And so there's going to be a line for kids, for teens and for parents to also share, you know, the, the sentiments of what consent is and to educate the public. So, yeah. That's awesome, Rosalia. I'm so yeah. glad for you. And I have to say to everybody, I really love how Rosalia is is using her own healing because I know you're in the journey of your own healing. And she, but she's also using that as a reach out um, ministry. That's how I see it. <laughs> yeah. To help out others out there, which, you know, like for me, being a woman and especially a woman of color, 
um, you know, like I think there's so many layers to um, the word of consent. And there's so many things that we need to say about, you know, like the movement right now in, in our society, um, the backlash of movement, <laughs> mm -hmm. and how we are raising next generations, which is something that all of us are very interested in because all of us are raising kids. Uh, it doesn't matter what age you can have a baby, but you need to start thinking about uh, all these uh, topics because what do old parents want? That yeah. their kids never have to go through those experiences. And the sad reality is that we live in a society that we're still a long ways to be there. And that's the fact check. Like, you know, I wish I can come here and tell everybody, like, oh, if you do this, you know, magically everything will be fine. And, and one of the reasons I wanted to invite Rosalia to have this conversation, especially as a parent, is because uh, we can do something about it, but we will never be 100% sure uh, because of our society, the way our society works. Yeah. And so one of the first things that I wanted to talk about is, like, why consent? Like, why do we talk about consent? Like, why is consent such an important thing? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, and that's a, a ideal question. So we, you know, culturally, especially, it, you know, in the Latin community, we have been raised um, predominantly under the idea that the parent is the authoritarian and the child is the submissive. They have to do everything that the parent says. And this actually, what we don't realize is that this disempowers children who are already the most vulnerable in our society. It disempowers them to understand their rights. And it also gives them the message that adults are always the ones who can do and say what they wish with the child. So it, it, it automatically gives the message that the child has no rights that the child's uh, voice and desires and ability of autonomy, of agency, don't matter. And so it puts kids in an even more vulnerable position um, so that if their boundaries or their rights are violated, they feel conflicted, they're not sure what they could do. Um, and then it, it opens up the door for more victimization not just in childhood, but as they grow up in adolescence exactly. and adulthood. Yeah. So, any age. Yeah, exactly. Any age. So the concept of, of uh, consent, it's you know, really like, some people, right. yeah, like so many people don't understand what, what it means, you know, because we talk a lot about it, especially in certain circles that we call woke. But I, I feel like it's such an important uh term that we need to you know explain the meaning what is concern like what what do you mean about concern yeah so consent is really the right that we have over our bodies over ourselves you know and it's not just our bodies it's also our mental physical emotional selves the rights that we have over over that so our agency our autonomy, autonomy. It really is yeah it really is about us understanding that we have that inherent right we're born with the right to ourselves yeah and um you know a lot of parents tend to think well my child belongs to me your child is your you're the guide you're the protector you know you can be those things but you are not the possessor you are not you know the the one that owns your child yeah. Um, legally on paper, you are the guardian, right? But that doesn't mean that you can do and say and, you know, uh, have author uh, um, the autonomy over them. And a lot of times, you know, parents uh, have a hard time wrapping their mind around that because they're like, well, I have to, you know, keep my child safe. And so there that feels like the blanket that can allow them to do those things. But as the child gets older, I mean, when they when they turn two, you know, that's when parents think it's the terrible twos. And it's really because a child starts to understand their autonomy. They actually start to understand their 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 uh, separation from the yes. parents. Right. And so we start to go, oh, my God, my child's out of control. Like they're trying to do their own thing. 
Um, so instead of actually helping them foster a healthy sense of individuality and a, a healthy sense of self, uh, we try, we wrestle with it because we are losing control. Yeah. And, and, and that comes from our background, you know, yes. because, you know, a lot of us were raised in families like that. Like you were supposed to do what your parents, uh, you know, will tell you or uh, any adult, by the way. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. including teachers, including people at your church or your place of worship, and and you were uh, supposed to blindly exactly. uh, do that, you know. And otherwise, you will receive a punitive, you know, aspect of yeah. the relationship. So I think that's something that is normal, you know, for a lot of us to think like when I have a child, I have to, you know, like discipline them. And, and that's where, you know, a lot of the power struggle starts. So yeah, it's not about uh, like, you know, like we're going to try to tell everybody like, oh, the way you're going to uh, raise your child is, is, is wrong. I no. would say more is, is, you know, trying to understand that the same way we want to be the owners of our own bodies and feel comfortable with our own bodies and our own fu functions, Little kids have the same feeling. Yeah. And yeah. because that's the way it's supposed to be. It's nothing wrong. So they, they should be able to decide, you know, like in their yeah. own body. And of course, that will come, you know, with different levels. Because, you know, it's not yeah. the same as having as a teenager as a little kid. But, uh, but I think that's why it's such an important um, term to teach them, even since they're babies, you know, the autonomy of their bodies, like yeah. their capacity to think about, you know, what is good for their own body, uh, like teach them since they're babies. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes people simplify that message by saying, oh, but uh, you don't let them touch, you know, here or there, or, you know, and I always say, well, but it's not only that. You know, like, 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 there's so many other layers because I want to say that I listened to one of the uh, talks that you had about uh, the, the, the instance that happened with your daughter, like oh, with, you know, with, the, with the, your friend, the friend yes. that came. And, and, you know, I wanted to address that because I think it's such a, something that happened even to me. <laughs> all the time yeah. that um, we are raising kids and I listen uh, a lot of parents say like no I want my kids to be respectful I'm in that team yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like right yeah. here I'm in that team I want my kids to be respectful to give thanks to say thank you to say good morning you know like that's something that I ask from them yeah. but at the same time you need to honor uh, when they are not feeling comfortable yeah. And, and, yeah. and that is part of their agency. And the same way you, 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 certain, you don't feel comfortable with certain people. And I love the example that you use because I think it's one of the ones that I use as well. The yeah. same is with the animals. Yes, yes. We don't speak the language of a dog or a cat. Yeah. But we have that language. Yes. So how many times adults assume that they know what the child is trying to say, when the child is not really saying anything, clearly they're feeling uncomfortable, they don't want to be touched, or maybe at the time they don't want to be, you know, bothered. And you have to really acknowledge, like, these kids is, are growing. Like, it's not like they're total adults, they will tell you, like, some kids are more chatty, but, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, so would you no, like to? Children are learning communication skills, right? And it's our yeah. job to help them to learn how to communicate with the world in social interactions. Like you said, we don't want to, we're not trying to raise rude children. And I think that a lot of times, um, especially I think in certain, you know, cultures, they feel like, you know, my child has to acknowledge the grandparents and they have to, you know, how can they not give a hug? Like that's going to be so rude. Um, and it's not about that. It's about Rem remembering that our bodies are our own and we want our children to know that their bodies are their own and they have the right to choose who they give affection to or not. It is not my child's responsibility to manage the emotions of another adult. Mm. You no, know? that's mm. number one. Number two is that you can teach a child to acknowledge the other person, but acknowledging the other person does not obligate them to have to give a hug or a kiss 
or any kind of physical contact if they don't want to. So, you know, it's really just about teaching them communication skills and teaching yeah. the adult, having them relearn what appropriate communication skills mean when it comes to physical contact. Because just because they did it that way doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. And, you know, for survivor parents, this is a really tricky and difficult issue because they grew up not understanding boundaries or not having their boundaries respected. So they have a hard time telling other people, especially maybe family members, listen, my child, I'm teaching my child this differently. And I would mm -hmm. like you to respect that. And, to, you know, I'm asking you to, you know, rethink how you interact. They're not trying to be rude. They still love you, but they're not obligated to that yeah. physical affection. Um, and then when you model that with your child, they understand that message too. And then they see how that interaction can happen. And it's about verbal communication. It's about the adult understanding the physical cues. Yeah. You know, so this is really about retraining culture. Exactly. About consent, you know? exactly. And so that's why I'm always that's talking why about it's so important. Yeah. That's why it's such an important concept. Uh, because for me right now, like I find like especially a lot of adults, uh, complain all the time. Like they're oh I now I cannot hug anybody. Now I cannot kiss anybody. I'm like, no, you can definitely do it, but just ask first. Yeah. The same with kids. Yeah. <laughs> like the only thing that you need to do is can you ask? Yeah. Uh, you can even do it like without even language, but like, you can do like Yeah. <laughs> use your sign language whatever yeah. if the person makes this space to you it's because they don't want it yeah. if they keep, like it's kind of like feeling like like clenching it, they don't want it don't yeah. touch their hair don't touch their cheek don't touch them yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if my cat is doing this to you like don't touch the cat the yeah. same for the dog so why so many adults in our in our culture are complaining all the time. Like I hear in the radio, even like they're like, "Oh no, it's like I cannot touch anybody because I feel like they're gonna sue me." And I'm like, "Come on, give me a break!" Like we're talking here about communication, basic yeah. communication. We all have different styles of communication. We are multicultural societies, which means like every culture has their own way to deal with communication. Uh, every culture has a, a different code for different touches, for different signs. But many times assuming things without asking. Like, I, like for example, I love hugging. I love it. I'm a hugger. Yeah. But assuming that everybody else is going to be a hugger is wrong. There's a lot of people out there that they want to be touched. And it's not because they don't like you or it's nothing personal. It's like because they may have trauma in their life because they're very sensitive. A lot of them may be in the spectrum. Uh, yeah. They're dealing with trauma day yeah. in and day out. So they don't want to be touched. And um, so I, I think it's such an important message to call across. The saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning from my children. I'm learning from their cues. Like some of the things that are very easy going for me as a mom yeah. are hard for my kid. Like, for example, I don't have any issues with nudity. You know, like I'm very open. But my kids are older now. And they're like, Mom, I don't want to see you. And, and you know, and, and at the beginning, I was like, what, what is the big deal? You know, and then I, I'm like realizing that, that is part of also their autonomy. And yeah. if I'm taking that away from them just because... I'm feeling comfortable, but they're clearly not feeling comfortable. I have to think about my immediate community, and my immediate community is my children. Yeah. So, yes, I can get naked when they're not around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if they already ask me, and I actually, they're very nice. They told me, like, it's fine, Mommy. It's fine. We know you like to be naked sometimes in the house. <laughs> they give me a pass once in a while. But um, it's something that is really hard for us as adults as our relationship changes yeah. with our children. Yeah, and, and it's, it, you know, when it comes to consent, like consent is about autonomy. The other conversation that's really important that I always talk about is boundaries. You know, so mm -hmm. your kids' boundaries are that, you know, if they feel they don't want a certain thing, then they're going to be able to communicate it, right? So boundaries are also something that is important to teach and that's part of consent education but it's a separate thing consent yeah. is really about that 
question is really the permission that you're seeking. And then boundaries are what you're okay and not okay with, and then how to communicate them, right? So some, you know, one of the things that I teach parents to practice is, uh, you know, teaching how to interact and how to vocalize boundaries because mm. if the child doesn't know how to say yes or no confidently if they haven't practiced it, then it's going to be really difficult when they come across a situation where somebody yeah. tries to violate that boundary, right? Yes. Yeah. And that can be something that is, you know, when I talk about that, a lot of times parents don't know what, like, they get nervous about how to teach that. It can be as simple as siblings that are, you know, pushing each other and, hey, that, you know, they violated my boundary. So when I say violate a boundary, you know, people immediately think something really severe. Yeah, like you have to much their private parts or something yeah, to do it's by not, violating. No, it's no, not like that. Yeah. So what, I, what I teach is like, yes, you do have private areas of your body, but really your whole body is private. Your, exactly. your whole body is your you private property. Secret being. Yeah. Teach that to children, by the way, because that, that way, you, they will be also very mindful about what they do to others. Because exactly. the, the step is not only, you know, what applies to only them, exactly. it's what applies to everybody else. Exactly, exactly. And that's the beauty of teaching about boundaries, because then you start to learn what, you, what yours are, what other people's are, how to start reading cues. That's why I talk about, you know, having pets is really great, because especially yeah. cats, I love that. you know. I yeah. have only used that, and, 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 and you know, people, please, uh, you can feed yourself with all the co the conversations that Rosalia has and, at her uh, Facebook page and also at her website because she has a lot of, like, if you guys have questions today, you can go and see a lot of her talk. She talks in, in, in detail of a lot of these issues. Today, I just wanted to have, like, a heartwarming, <laughs> like, taste the waters because I'm pretty sure we can speak for hours about this because it's very it's very passionate as well yeah. for me uh, as being as a woman of color that grew up in an environment that was very hostile mm -hmm. especially for women and sadly I have two kids that I'm trying to raise mindfully about it and empowering them uh, to be you know like who they want to be first of all but it, I'm not going to lie. It's a hard issue, especially if you yourself hasn't, haven't healed yet about our own trauma. And it's something that we need to start working actively. And, and you know, one more thing that I wanted to say about that is, like, don't expect that that's going to happen for yourself by yourself. Yeah. Most of the time, if we have things, things that we need to heal and, you know, bring it out, we will need a network and a safe network of people who will understand our pain and who will help us to find the best ways to find our personal healing. Personal healing can vary for different persons. Like for Rosalia, this is part of her healing, you know, using her uh, gifts to help the community. But for others, may not be that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and bottom line, if we as parents are not uh, healing ourselves, how in the world we're going to help our kids to empower themselves yeah. and learn as a family? Like, like, remember, education is learning as a family. We don't know everything at one point, but we can help uh, getting the situation better. I would like to say uh, to everyone that if you, you follow A, B, C, you know, you won't ever go through those things. But sadly, as you know, uh, I feel like our system is a patriarchal system in which a lot of times, you know, people, and, and I don't like to use the word victim. Uh, sometimes I like, I like to use the, 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 you know, the person was disempowered mm -hmm. at that moment. And, and I don't see a way of uh, good support uh, in, in our system at this moment, to tell you the truth. It actually makes me very upset. And, and, but that's why, as, as mom, moms in our community, we need to have these conversations. Why is it so triggering for me to hear in the news about like, these famous cases? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. exactly. Because we know way too many people that have been in t into that situation. And first, they didn't want to talk because they won't, they never, you know, they will never believe them. And nothing is, has been done, you know, like, yeah. and that's a huge issue as a society that we need to keep moving forward in the sense of, you know, hopefully getting to the point where everybody is going to be so involved with the consent mm -hmm. rather than just assuming things. Like so many situations can be avoided just by asking directly and understanding that people, you know, go through situations, you know, including our children. Yeah. Our child may like to get a hug today and may not want to have a hug tomorrow. And that doesn't mean that they don't love us. It's just, you know, who they are in personality, perhaps, or they're just having a hard day. Yeah, and it's just like us. I mean, it's just like adults. We tend to think that, you know, we get upset when kids have a bad day, and it's like, well, don't you have a bad day every so often? You know, like we don't give them that space, and a lot of times, you know, we want them to, like, do what we say, or you know, it's so it's it's a whole like mental shift that needs to happen too, where we again don't just uh, educate our children, but also the adults in their yes. lives around. Them. It, mm -hmm. it has to be a process that happens with everyone. You know, like you said, it's community, it takes a village, and it really is about creating consent culture and, and really dismantling rape culture, which is where yeah. all of these ideas of us having the right to hug or having, the, you know, mm -hmm. a, a really quick little funny story I want to tell you mm -hmm. is that um, when my youngest child was, um, I think he was two at the time, and my oldest was four, we're at the grocery store, and they're both sitting in the cart, you know, and I'm, I'm going through the grocery store and there's this lady who um, I think she was like on vacation. She had come back a month later and she's like, had, hadn't seen the kids, you know, they grow fast. Right. So she's like, Oh my God, it's so good to see you. How are you? And she sees my youngest one and she just is like, she's so cute. She just comes over and like kisses him right on the forehead. And my, my four-year-old looks at her and like wipes the kiss off of the face of my youngest <laughs> child. She like, he wipes it off and he looks at her and he's like, you can't just do that. And she's like, oh, you're, you're right. I'm so sorry. You know, you're right. Because would you just do that to an adult? Would you just like kiss the, you know, I mean, if you, if the adult knew you and you have that kind of friendship, that's okay. But you know, this is a two year old doesn't know this person totally. Yeah. And my, my four year old was able to stand up for my my son, you know, and it was just really heartwarming. And she just took a step back didn't get offended, you know, because it's yeah. really all about how you communicate. Exactly. And I just kind of stood there like, smiling and the lady said, you're absolutely right, you know, and it was just so cute to see that because kids they know early on their rights. You know, they, they feel a sense of self. And when we as adults are like, you know, no seas bayunco, or like, don't be rude. It takes that away from them. And then they're like, oh, I did something wrong wanting to have agency over me. So it's really important that we don't just educate our kids, but we're educating. Oh, them. Yeah, it has to be like, like, that's why I say it has to be a family education, it, like to learn how to deal with these situations. Like I have the same issues with a family member <laughs> that they tell me like, oh, but they're not educated, you know, like how come they don't do this or that? And, and I have to kind of like remind them like, well, you know, like they don't want to do it, but they can do something else. I'm not, I'm not even... You know, going because, you know, like I get it. Some parents don't even care if their kids say hi or not. Like in my house, I do care. Yeah. And, but the touch. And then, of course, you know, like, like for example, they don't want to share something that is about, you know, their private life with everybody. Yeah. Like, you know, I get called out all the time, especially with my teenagers. They're like, mom, I don't want to say anything about that. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, they think we sharing pictures of them, you know, like sometimes they take the most cute picture and I, I have to ask them before yeah. I post the picture in my social media because it's their picture. 
Yeah. And uh, and sometimes they tell me, no, I don't want the picture. I'm like, what's the big deal? Oh, because we don't want it. And and then you know, like it's kind of like letting go and that mentality that oh, because I'm letting them telling me to do something, then I'm losing my authority. Right. Our yeah. parenting and has to be comes to, That comes from colonial mentality yes. as well. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Our yeah. relationship with anyone, if it's about control and power, let's rethink it. Yeah. And it's I'm talking connection. about it because I'm a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Leo here. And I, and I find out a long time ago that I have issues with uh, my power and control um, tendencies. Mm. And that's something that I have to work actively on me. Because sometimes, you know, like I was yeah. getting offended with both of my children. Like, how come they're doing that? And, you know, and, and my partner is like, why are you feeling so upset? Why is this so important? And it's asking me, you know, like, why it has to be something about power and control? Any relationship that has any type of abuse, could be mental, sexual, physical, spiritual, it starts with that dynamic. And that's why, you know, I think it's such an important step I'm a spiritual being, and every time we teach our children about, like, a higher being, a faith, when persons are threatening children to love a God, yeah. <laughs> they are disempowering them. Please listen. Yeah. Because if they see an authority figure that is supposed to be, like, their higher being, and somehow they have to worship it, and, you know, like, you know, all these mentalities, and if you're telling the child, oh, you know, like, if you don't do this, then you're going to get the punishment. And yeah. that's what a lot of people who are aggressors use. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I mean, I grew up with that, too. My my mother grew up with that. So that's how she was, you know, raised to educate us. And it, it does take being more mindful and more conscious. And it is an effort to break old patterns, you know, so... You're right when you were saying before that you can't do it alone. You do need support because yeah. y you need that reminder. You know, the fact that I'm doing this work all the time is a constant reminder for me because I have a default of wanting to be the authoritarian. That's yeah. the default that I grew up with. And you find that you have a harder time communicating with your children. They uh, aren't able to express themselves, which means that later when they are in a situation that matters, they don't feel like they can communicate or they have fear about communicating yeah. when something happened, you know? So one of the things that I also teach is to, to educate kids on being able to listen to their instincts, to their gut, to their intuition. That's really mm -hmm. important because when we are authoritarians, we shut that down. And we don't let them express their intuition. And so they start not trusting it. And, oh. you know, that's a really important part of consent mm -hmm. education as well. So when I, I talk to parents about, you know, uh, teaching kids how to listen to that intuition and how to step into, uh, you know, if something feels like listening to their body and what is their body telling them and, to, yeah. you know, to respond to that uh, is also really important because that will help them to understand that their boundaries are okay and that it's okay to uphold the boundaries yeah and, um, so that's also and and it's really just about empowering your child empowering your child to tune in to that voice that is telling them this is this feels good this doesn't feel good this is right this is right. the best way to do this work is doing it to yourself yes but if the yeah. children see you yeah. as a parent as an adult to trust your instincts, yeah. you know, and I'm not talking about assumptions and prejudices because sometimes, you know, <laughs> yeah. like I remember my grandmother saying like, no, I don't like that person because, you know, I'm like, no, you're just being prejudiced. Like yeah. it's, it has nothing to do with your instinct. We're talking about like, uh, like really listening, you know, when you're not feeling comfortable, when you're stomach feeling like a knot, you're starting to have a knot here. Like they're very, very, concrete physical model that to your children yeah let them know like have that communication with your children like oh oh i'm not feeling comfortable about this i'm having kind of like a very uncomfortable feeling 
in the way that that person say hi to me. Yeah. And then have that conversation. And it's not like, you know, like, why? Why do you think I have this feeling? And then, you know, like having us as a, a, a more normal part of our everyday lives. Like, why do we feel the way we feel? Yeah. And, you know, I know a lot of religious parents, you know, use that also, you know, in a way that saying like God is showing them some something or stuff like that. I believe like our instincts are God. <laughs> <laughs> because we are part of that, you know, like it's, it's a yeah. system, it's, a, it's an internal system. So when a child is telling you or crying every time they see a person and, or go to a place, something is going on. We're not staying here and we're not being implicit here, like, oh, it's sexual abuse necessarily, but it's something that is, it's, it's, a, it's a sign that this child is getting uncomfortable and giving them anxiety. And and we need to start, you know, finding out why is my child, uh, you know, doing these and yeah. what's going on. Yeah. And the same for adults. If we're not doing mod modeling that in our everyday lives, it is not going to happen. The same with asking with co for consent. You know, yeah. like we're not doing it ourselves with other adults. Like for example, I I, I had to learn that uh, years ago uh, with the hugging. Mm -hmm. Because I was a hugger, <laughs> and then somebody told me, you know, like, well, you shouldn't, you know, like this person that didn't like it when you hug them. And I was like, how come, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like what's going on? And they're and they're like trying to explain to me like this person has a situation, you know, and they're healing and this and this. And, and then it suddenly hit me like, like, wow, I was so inconsiderate and not thinking about someone else. Yeah. Um. So. Just that, as first, uh, keep empowering children with their own bodies. There's so many layers to this topic, but I will definitely send everybody to your website you. about consent and uh, consent parenting. And, and she has a podcast. You guys can learn every uh, week, every two weeks that uh, she puts down uh, every more uh, programs. Uh, I will be uh, uploading our link uh, to a little interview that I did to Rosalia on our website. I, I'm behind. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but I will put the, the link uh, as soon as possible so you will find all her um, links there. But if you, you, you know, if you want to go right ahead, just go to her uh, IG page. It's uh, Parenting Consent. Consent Parenting. Oh, yep. sorry. Consent Parenting. I was doing it. Yep. So we're going to uh, cut the English one now. And we're going to enter again and we're going to start uh, having a conversation in Spanish because I, I think this is such an important topic. And I think a lot of the Hispanic um, puppies and mommies are really interested in, you know, like knowing more about it. So thank yeah. you so much for everybody that joined into this one. I will be uploading this one also as well uh, in IGTV and our Mama Tortuga. Thank you.